1972, glam rock took its first fabulous platform steps. And in fact, one man would dominate. He was a lad from London, and I knew him, and he was a fantastic performer. His name was Mark Bolland. Well, when I listen to Mark's music now, when I talk about it, it still makes me feel like a teenager. Arrogance is the first word that comes to mind. He was really full of it, and he knew he was great. That he could back it up, though. I remember when Metal Guru came out, and I actually took the day off school, and um, I went to a record shop in Birmingham called Lewis's, and um, went in and got the single, and it was just so exciting. Parents didn't particularly like him. You know, I can remember my father and he'd say, oh, look at all those pictures of Mark Bolan on the wall. He's got his hair in his eyes and you've got your hair in your eyes and your brother's copying you. He did say in interviews, I'm better looking than a lot of chicks that, that come to my concerts, you know, which he was. Sure, he was sexy. He knew it too. And girls knew it and boys knew it. <laughs> when it's down to really boy. Glam rock was something new for the 70s. And nobody was more flamboyant, more glamorous than Mark and his group T-Rex. He was off the time because he invented the time, and so the bowl, to me, Bowl will always be the person that invented uh, glam rock. He became this teeny bop rock and roll star. And that's when pop music twisted around and got really good for three years. Well, the glam thing happened to both Bowie and and Bolin around the same time. They could put on women's clothes and look great. David used to come round to the house and they would go off down King's Road, pulling. This is Mark Bolin and I'm David Bowie. And they say, get away. <laughs> There's been a change in England in two years and we are part of the change. I mean, guys now can wear makeup, they can shout and scream. Shout and scream they did. T-Rex mania took over and Mark Bolin became the ultimate rock star. For about a year, like T-Rex were the biggest band in Britain, and we're the biggest band since the Beatles. It's like hit after hit, great song after great song. You are so sweet. The gigs were just unbelievable. The whole gig seemed to be full of young girls, and everything he did, like put his hand up, spoke, anything, everyone would just scream. Because you're my love. Rock and roll is, is magic. I mean, uh, the elements are magic. Uh, what is magic is the power of the human being to relate to another human being. One minute I was there watching the gig, the next minute I fainted. <laughs> and I had to be carried backstage. I just sat kind of looking down on this chair and then I was aware that someone was walking from my right. And as I turned to look, it was Mark. I waited so long for that moment. But when he come home, he would never dare be a superstar because my mum would have just put her finger down and said, stop. We play for the kids that never saw the Beatles, never saw Jimi Hendrix. They're seeing us as those sort of people, you know, because they never saw it, they weren't around them. The average age of the audience is 15. T-Rex had transformed pop music. But after 18 brief months, the mania began to fade. If you're the most popular person of a certain period, and you put your stamp on it, it's very difficult when the times change. Record reviews were now saying every T-Rex single sounded the same, the album sounded the same, but it was true. And when I confronted Mark, he looked, for one second he looked inside and he says, no, not yet, he says, we have to do one more rock album, you know, one more for the kids. The kids were shifting their allegiance to other pop acts. For Mark, holding the spotlight wasn't going to be easy. He certainly had insecurities about um, losing his fame. And what do you do when you're Mark Bolan? You can't go and get a normal job or get back into normal life, because once you've had that thing where well, loads of people think you're some kind of young god, you can't go back to being a human being. It was a hard life to have, have to keep on all the time. It wears you out. 
burned you out. By 74, Mark was very, very involved in that world of cocaine, cognac, cocaine, cognac, and uh, it did impair his judgment. He put on lots and lots of weight. It was quite tragic. It was very hard being a fan because anyone you spoke to would go, oh, Mark Berlin is finished. Mark came out of his dark days and married American soul singer Gloria Jones. They had a son named Rowan. He was over the moon, and that was the best thing that could have happened because it settled him down, and, uh, well, he lived for Row. Gloria and Mark were involved in a tragic accident. The news came that he'd been killed in a car crash. It was, it was just devastating, actually. It was just the worst, worst time. It, it just took a while for it to sink in. And I, th I, was, I remember I just sat up thinking, no, it can't be right. It was the worst thing that happened to any of us, I think, at that time. I could have loved you, girl, like a planet. Mark Bolan was just 29 when he died. His image would be frozen in time. And my whole life revolved around T-Rex. And I just thought, well, my life's finished. I can't think what else I'm going to do now. Life's a gas. And I hope it's going to we used to go to conventions and Mark Bolan parties um, after Mark had died. It was the only place to go where, where fans could uh, congregate and chat about T-Rex. He was with a couple of friends and they were all wearing this same Mark Bolan T-shirt. And I hadn't seen this T-shirt before, so initially I just went up and said, where did you get your T-shirt from? And that's, that was our kind of first, first meeting all, all, those, all those years ago. Two of Mark's biggest fans, Karen and Daniels, found true love, and married. To my knowledge, there's only one Mark Bolin impersonator, and that's Daniels, and he does it so well. When I was about 14, if I'd have thought, I'll marry someone who looks like Mark and who's a singer in a tribute band, I mean, if someone had told me that, I would have thought they're completely mad. Yeah, now you're tall, you're 